Friday. It's Friday. You hadn't seen us in a while, but it's Friday. You know Friday. Have we been fishing? We've been fishing. Y'all could blame it on the time change. Right now, what, 8 o'clock, we'd be putting the boat on the shore. No, we'd still be fishing a little while. Yeah, we'd <laughs> We would still be on the water for a little bit. We might be close to putting our stuff away. Yeah. Towards the ramp, maybe. We got three people in here and commercials going on, so I don't even know if we're up live yet. We'll got be a... slap hunter, hello, hunting and stuff. Hello. What's up, H&S? How are you tonight, man? We just thought we'd pop up live for a little while. Sunfish for fish. What's up, man? How are you doing? We just hanging out. Like I said, we've missed the last four or five Fridays because the fish are biting at sunset. Welcome in, Kevin Hawthorne, another Florida gentleman. Hello, Kevin from Lake Lakewood. Yep, Kevin from Lakewood, Lakewood I believe. Lakewood, Lake Port. Lake Lake. No, not Lake somewhere. Port. Kevin from somewhere. Yeah. Oh, we're good, H and S. Like I said, we've been hunting about it every day. Oh, doing some carp fishing. We've been chasing big bass. Oh, hey, Steve. Hello, Miss Daisy. What's up, Steve? I don't know if y'all noticed the thumbnail. That's a nice one that Lindy had just caught. That will uh, be in the video that premieres in the morning at 9 o'clock. Lakeland, Florida. That's hey, it. We knew we was all yeah. over it there. Had the first part right. How'd your, uh, you said something about the news doing another interview with you or somebody doing an interview. How'd that go, Kevin? But we have been on big fish. You know, our spawn is over, so the big girls are hungry. Fish we are catching now, poor little things, are skinny from spawning, but they got fat little bellies because they've been putting the food on. Yeah. I see two stands just went live. And we've debated doing changing nights. So don't be surprised if we go to a night during the week. It seems like here lately we got charters and stuff going on, and with the time not getting dark till now, Fridays get a little tough. We might go to like a Tuesday or something. Shane? Steve? Oh. Steve? <laughs> oh, Shane. Same thing here in Texas. Um, I suppose you're talking about fish turning on after the spawn and biting right at dark. Yeah. Some of our best bites have been between seven and eight. Like right now, we'd be, we were on fish this time last night, and this time tomorrow night, we'll be on fish. Yeah. Well, I mean, Retired to what? Uh, I don't know what retired Tuesday is, Chris. Retired maybe, Tuesday? maybe y'all. I think it's another live maybe that goes on with retired Rick and maybe Chris. I think I've heard of that. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, we've been warm. We hit ninety again today. Gonna be ninety something tomorrow. LOL. Well, what's up, big nasty? Thanks for rolling up in here. Oh, Ted from off the hook supposed to show up sometime. We got a little challenge thing we're going to do with him for anybody that wants to join it and he's got a little something going on he wants to talk about but yes everybody watch for in the morning at nine o'clock that's a pretty fun video we got from here and if you'll look and see that donkey lands on fire yesterday if you quit fridays to start doing tuesdays oh okay we don't need to quit fridays we just we may not show up from fishing See what Kevin's I'm still waiting for Channel 10 News to contact me back when they're going to do the story before May or June. Yeah, Kevin, I, I saw, uh, I must have went to your page and saw some of the older interviews of you on the news. You do a lot of work in that town. Look at Steve. We had four inches of snow yesterday. Ha, 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 ha. Welcome in, Wendy Jane Watson. Hello, Wendy Jane. Watson. Watson. Remember Lisa Watson? Lisa Watson and her brother Hua Watson. May he rest in peace. May he rest in peace, Wa. Wa man the barbarian. That's an old biker friend of ours. That's what everybody his name was uh Scott Watson. Scott Watson. Scott Watson, but all the bikers called him Wa. And then that turned into Wa Nan the Barbarian, and he was Wa Nan the Barbarian. Uh, yeah, it's April down here. I don't know, Steve. It feels like June down here. We need rain. Our yards are dry and brown. I mean, but I'm not complaining. Donkey land water is going down every day. And every time it gets a little shallower, them bass get a little easier to catch. They get a little. 
They ain't got a lot of places to hide. That way with Okeechobee, that water's going down. We'll Finally down. getting Okeechobee down some. Yeah. What's up, Slab Hunter? What, you're not talking to me? You talk to the cat, but. Hey, Slab Hunter. It's been fun. Like I said, we have been wrecking. We tried to figure up yesterday. I'll bet in the last two weeks, because we've had anywhere from what 18 19 fish day afternoons the 30 some so we got hundreds of fish in the boat in the last couple of weeks yeah, there's packing. there's our catch little bass teddy what's up ted <laughs> yeah just in case i hate him i know slab i ain't no going on hi chad how's work teddy said you put a floor in an elevator oh remind me not riding that elevator I'm supposed to put like a linoleum floor, whatever the, the top oh, floor. I'm not thinking Ted was putting like the floor in an elevator. Okay, elevators which he, are haunted. Which he may could. What's up, Stu Diddy? Did I see your first comment? I must not have if you're having to point it out. You, be, uh, you better start practicing. Ted, 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 Ted. Ted. See, I'm thinking, Ted, when we challenge you, me and Lindy will be just like a tag team. We'll just tag in and out. You know, one of us will fish a while, then the other one, you know, which we'll keep fishing, but it'll just count. We'll just go back and forth. We know what's happening with Ted. He's having delusions. That's what's wrong with him. He's having delusions. See, we have had nearly three weeks of sunshine that it turns to rain and hail and occasional strong winds. Oh, hail. Oh, hail. Oh, hail. Or Kyle. What's up, Kyle? Hey, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Dark 30 Outdoors. How are you? I'm looking for shed antlers, but I found a bone. Not seen very often. I see him once while he pops some up. He makes some little old shorts once in a while. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Look at here. Rob. Hey, Rob. Well, there's Hank Snow. Hey, Hank. But hey, I, Hank. I was trying to hit Rob. What's up, Rob? Mr. Hanky. Mr. Hanky. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I never thought of calling Hank Snow Mr. Hanky until now. So, uh, Hank Snow, you're probably Mr. Hanky. And there's Mr. Lynn, Mr. Catfish, what, Catfish Fever and Outdoors. Hello, Catfish Fever and Outdoors. I have an amazing mushroom video coming out tomorrow. Oh, man, if we'd have had phones back in the day, I'd have showed you an amazing mushroom story. That goes Sorello mushrooms or whatever. Morello. Morello. No, that's Morel. Morel or something. Morello is the guy that come down catfishing or uh, back crappy fishing. Uh, West Virginia Josh, he's been getting those. Has he? Yeah. There's Mr. Chris, the Bogley, the one and only Manatee. Hey, Chris. Hey, Bogley. Glad to see everybody popping in. Uh, I hope y'all miss us. Bogley's keeping it real. What you doing, Ted? Are you real busy? Why don't you throw up some links to everybody's channels? Or is he at work? Oh, the moral of the story oh, is, oh, Teddy Rucks, but you so funny. Morals, Immorals, morales, whatever. You ain't got no. Just because you are a character doesn't mean you have character. If anybody wants to jump up, just tell me and we shall hook you up. Almost anybody. Continental U.S. We got to know uh, Stu Diddy tonight. <laughs> I promised I'd behave. Oh, man. Here we go. Diane laying it out there. Hello, Diana. And we're just going to read it as Diana said hello to all that. To everybody. Else. Dark 30 throwing up the yo, yo to the yo, yo, yo. So what's everybody up to? You're coming. Ah, no, Ted. Uh, you know, I told everybody, you had told people earlier you had something you want to chit chat about. Hello, Stuart. I just saw your hello. Hello, Stuart. Hello, Stuart. Whatever happened to Doc? I'm really not sure. He got busy and been doing all that other, and we just, we, I, we text once in a while, but he's mainly doing his thing, I guess, now. We're hoping he'll pop up sometime. So. He had a birthday last yeah, his birthday was last week, and his wife's was the same day as my birthday. So, happy birthday, Doc. Oh, I know you ain't watching. Yeah. And Jennifer. 
What's up, still in? You're welcome up in here. That's his face. He says that every day. Everybody read that. That is the still in your uh, motto or whatever. You know what I mean. And what's this? Slab going bass fishing tomorrow. John, first time on the water in two. Good for you. Wow, we got off the water, let's see, exactly 24 hours and three minutes ago. And all we did is talk about it today. We should be fishing and not worried about it. Jim. How did y'all, have you not seen none of the videos, Rob? Ours is up, b Maz is up, and that No Name Bassins is up. So I don't want to tell too much, but we had a great time. Those are funny guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Straight out of the ghettos of Pittsburgh. It's nobody. <laughs> Dead. Dead. Did y'all's power go out? It's dark, Ted. I kicked Ted. I kicked him hard. Oh, nice work, Steve. What's Steve do? Here we go. Out turkey hunting today and yesterday. Got one top. Very cool. My toms disappeared on me. Well, they rolled in. I wish seeing them everywhere else, but around here. Can you process them and keep them eating me? Process. Ain't nothing like processed turkey. What's up, Curtis? Hello, Curtis. Welcome. Welcome in, Curtis. Uh, straight from the damn back streets of Pittsburgh, it's Teddy. There he is. Uh, hey, weather's Teddy. been terrible here. Rain, wind, random warm days while I'm working. There you go. Welcome in, Mr. Tully. All right, Stu Diddy. Easy now. <laughs> so what's up, Teddy? Not much. Just got done putting that floor in. VCT tile. Let me answer your question. Visa, that's like uh, school hallway, rubbery tile stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I crumbled up from them putting on uh, pallet jacks and stuff and broke it all up, so I had to replace it. Are you pretty handy to have a little You pretty little handy little rabbit, George you did. Turn your volume up just a touch, Ted. Okay. Having okay. dinner, Alyssa. Sorry, but I'm, uh, no worries still. And we're not a whole lot to listen to, but appreciate it. Is that your office or are you in the principal's office? I am in our break room. <laughs> break room? Yeah, break room. Looks like a jail. Yeah, somebody said something about you were still in jail. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what you been up to, Ted? Nothing. Just getting all that stuff together. I wanted to see what you were up to with your fishing. Well, oh, I'm going to tell a story on Ted. Okay. Ted tries to call me. Was it yesterday or day before? Day before, I think. One day. And I don't get signal at Donkey Land, but every couple places, every once in a while, I'll get signal. Phone goes, boom, boom. I get a couple. I see that I got a couple text messages from sometime earlier. I don't know when. And it's one from Ted. And I'm going to read it exactly how I read it. I mean, how it was written. Are you fishing again? That's exactly how I read that. And Lindy goes, well, he probably, not. I mean, she did, Ted. She defends you and goes, oh, he's probably just wondering because he could. I said, hell no. That was Jelly Ted going, you fish it again? <laughs> so, which was it, Ted? It was uh, sort of a little poke saying, I know you were fishing type deal. All right, see you, Big Nasty. And now uh, let's welcome somebody new. What's up, Crank Master Mason? Crank Master Mason. What's up? Crank Master. But you know him, Ted? I do not. No, well, welcome in, Crank Master. Oh, I thought you said that because I can't hear you. I know he's a little muffled, isn't he? I got him yeah. turned up here, but you're still. Hey, Bob. You know what I can do? I can come out and come back in. That might be no, better. No, that there. sounds great right there. Quit leaning back, lean forward. Okay. Better. Yeah, the microphone. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. What's up, Bob from Wisconsin? I had some bruschetta for supper. And it was I've ate all the curds, all the strings, all the. Oh, I'm on the 12 year old cheddar now, Rob. Oh, I made damn scrambled eggs this morning and just coated them with that. You know, Ted, you know, Bob sent us that up. Uh, yeah, that that beef package. Yeah. Dude, that block of 12 year old cheddar, that stuff will stand up and talk to you, it's man. It is, it's good. It's so good, but it's got that stuff on the sides they say don't cut that off because that's the aged part uh-huh really oh it is it it's blends. good it's so good hang on ted let's catch up with chris i'm getting out shad i'm going out shad fishing tomorrow only, only out on the river twice been killing my fishing time being so high well 
Bogley, put the bowl down, son. Oh, wait a minute. I think there's more to it. It's clear and visible. Oh, okay. I'm assuming you mean the river so high and not you. But speaking of that, everybody watch my premiere in the morning because remember. Ask you. I wanted to stop you right there. What's the deal with the fire? Are you going to give it away yet or are you going to wait for the premiere? No, you got to watch it. Donkey Land, that's the road to Donkey Land, dude. We're not far from the boat ramp right there. Yeah, I know you said that, but I didn't know if you were, you were telling. I didn't know if I missed it because I was driving here. I didn't know if you explained that or if you're going to wait for the premiere. No, you got to watch the video, man. I mean, it's remember, it's it's yeah, tomorrow's 420, so it's just going to be a fun, exciting video. You can guarantee. Yep, like always. Welcome in, Bud Files. Damn, every time I go to click on somebody, they move right before I like trying to damn kill a skeeter. Wait a minute. Oh, see, right there, did it to me again. Bugly, the smoke can wait. LOL, the fish are my top priority. Oh, slab hunter, multitask. Come on now. Bob, just you wait till tomorrow. What's Bob talking about? Nothing. I'm just rubbing it in. Oh, yeah, Bob. Oh, and did anybody notice the thumbnail for this live is actually the fish Lindia catches in the video tomorrow that all I've said is it's, Ted doesn't even know, it's bigger than my 7.6 I caught earlier. Yeah. So you want to make a guess on it, Ted? I'll say 8.3. Okay. There's a hint in the thumbnail, kind of, if you look at that thumbnail. Okay, I didn't look at the thumbnail yet. Uh, I bet Shiner Guy got it. I saw, I saw the fire. You talking about the one for tomorrow? Yeah, the one with the fire. It's in that one. But there's a little, there's one little thing in the thumbnail that'll tell you a little bit about the weight. Okay. Well, maybe, yeah, I'll say 8.3 just to say it's probably like a 7.8 or 7.9. But I'll say 8.3. I said that first. Well, I'd keep with that because I'm going to tell you the little hint. The Florida Trophy Catch PNG or you know, the little logo is in the thumbnail. And what does it mean when it's got a Florida trophy catch PNG? I'm going to say it's over eight pounds, right? It has to be over eight pounds to be a Florida trophy catch. So mm -hmm. that's all. Awesome. Did you ever look at the bass and say, get in my belt? Uh, no, Stuart, I didn't. <laughs> Maybe he should come up and do the old sexy thing. No, he don't need to. I said we're continental U.S. tonight because I promised Lindy I'd behave. <laughs> he's, 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 he's trying to stir the pot like me. He knows it. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. I see Mr. Bob ain't blue. Let me make Bob blue. Diana, in here. Hi, Diana. How are you? But I do want to talk about my two things that I put up, John. So whenever you have time, you let me know and I can talk about it. All right. We'll get to it in a minute. What did I eat, Rob? Do all your what, stuff. What were we talking about? The cheeses you, and stuff? Yeah. If you're talking about the cheeses, I held to the yeah, but I don't think that's yeah. what he's talking about. Did you, uh, deep fry, did you deep fry any of that cheese, John? Like bread it and deep fry it at all? No, I haven't I have, got that. I have the bacon, cheddar, bacon cheese, or something. There's something we have to put in the oven that came, but. No, I fried the pan, but I'm waiting for Coach to get here because it's a big slab, and I don't want to do it just for me and John. So I'm deep frying that stuff would be awesome if you but, cut it up in cubes and breaded it and deep fried it. Yeah. But now the curds, you know, I get in there making breakfast and just take a handful of them and throw them like in the frying pan beside whatever I was cooking. Yep. And get them some guns and just brown it. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah good. Oh, my gut did not appreciate that first about week and a half on that damn <laughs> Wisconsin bag because I've been all up in it. Yeah, Stuart, I did it last week. get probably. bass fishermen mad talking about eating bass. Oh, yeah. I don't. Oh, speaking of that, Rob, we, the day we went with BMAS and all, met them at Donkey Land, we get back to the boat ramp. And if you'll watch our video, Ted, if you'll notice there's people in the background fishing on the pier. And they were all, it was funny. We never spoke to them at first. They're having to listen to all our closers and all. So I go walking towards the truck and that, the woman over there hooks one. I got a pretty good video of we go trying to jump in the, about getting the water, getting her fish. But anyway, we get up there to the top of the hill and that old man looked at me from Alaska. This whole, these three people are from Alaska. Okay. He goes, come look at the one I got in this bucket up here. And I looked at him and I looked up by his truck. And I could see the tail of a bass out of the top of this five gallon bucket. Dude, I looked at Mr. Alaska guy and goes, do you know this is a catch and release only lake with that bass? And you're sitting on the dirt road that the game warden rides to check these lakes. He looked at me and goes, really? We've been coming for years. They got a little house somewhere on Lake Mary. And I was like, 
yeah, it is a catch and release. And I said, if that dude comes down the road, you got that. It is about a five pounder, maybe six pounder. Yeah. I said, if you got it in that bucket, now he had it with his shiners, just head down. Yeah. He got that fish out, went down to the boat ramp, moved it around a little bit, and that thing took off. I was like, well, did I they, saved they, both of y'all. Did they find you by like how big the fish is, or or if you nah, have? it's just one big slam. Yeah. If I'm mistaken, it's like three hundred some bucks. I mean, it's yeah. a lot. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing links, Diana. Yeah. There may be one or two people don't have the others, but appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, Lindy asked me to do that, but I was driving and then I was getting on, so that's uh, why you I don't have that. to. Yeah. But uh. Plus you're at work. Trying to think of other things that we'll highlight off before Ted gets started. But yeah, we're on the big fish. They're all in one big general clear area. Right where we fish, Ted, the back lake of Donkey Land there in the middle. Yeah. Like everything's so thick around it, and in the middle is probably that three, four acres, five acres, maybe right there. The bass right now, John. You know what? How deep are the bass? Are they still kind of deep or are they up in shallow? Oh, dude, Donkey Land has lost water. I bet Donkey Land ain't three and a half foot of water back there. Yeah, really? They lost over a foot in that, the last couple of weeks. That's okay. why it's, you know us, Ted, if a fish gets within five foot of the surface, I got his ass, you know? Yeah. yeah. And now they got nowhere to go that it's not under four foot. No, Even when they want to hide and get up under something. Yeah. Oh, I'm Rock on vacation next week. Cool. Give us a holler. Yeah. Coach comes in like the last day of April. 29th. Yeah. 29th. So exactly. I'll have them for three, four days. Rob, maybe we can all meet and go to Jackson too. Yeah. Do that. Let me ask you a question, John. Because I, I always, you know how Scott Martin's like one of my favorite fishermen. And he's always with that Lake Okeechobee trying to get it, you know, right. Right. So is Lindia. The Apple. Yeah. Okay. And, um, what is the deal is there's too much water in it or not yes. enough water in it it's too, too much. much they too much. lower it so the grass grows to create that filter again but Correct. see the people on the coast are thinking their blue green algae is coming from water from okeechobee yeah so they're bitching and making them keep it full yeah and like when it gets up 15 foot or whatever we can't get any grass to grow you know because it's all too deep yep when yep. we moved here okeechobee was like 10 to 11 foot and dude, it was like when Donkey Land gets shallower, I mean, it just gets amazing. Yeah. But you know, Irma tore all the grass out. They did all this, they had all this spraying lined up at that same time. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was just a double whammy and it killed the lake. Yep. And the blue green algae is from a hundred years of all these cow pastures and farms around this lake, just to be honest. All the chemicals going in the water, well, what they're spraying. Yeah, not even counting the artificial chemicals. I mean, the by the natural, you know, we got a lot of cows, man, and I, I, I'm sorry, but poop rolls downhill. Yeah. And plus all the septic systems, everything, you know, it goes down in the ground. You it's know, Florida, it's sand, sand, man. And it's, you know, it's just. And it's yeah. one of those things that's been going on, you know, hundreds of years. Yep. And they're trying to get everybody on like city step. You know, they're doing their best, but I mean, you can't just wipe out a couple hundred years of just, you know, whatnot. It's just interesting to follow him and what he's doing down there and right. for what's going on there. Cause you know, th that they related that Okeechobee almost to like the Everglades because the Everglades is a big filter for water. Well, exactly. Okeechobee's the head of the Everglades. That's the yeah, start of it. Exactly. The head of the filter basically. And that's what Scott was saying. Like, you know, that's a big, big important part of the Everglades is that right there. And if you right. start that, it starts messing with the Everglades and the filter system goes all out of whack right. because well, dude, they're not letting it flow south. Donkey Land is a great example. You know, if they let Okeechobee, when it's low is when it's its clearest. Go to Donkey Land right now. You go in the front lake where they've got all the grass about killed out. Right now, that lake is dirty. You go to that place where we're fishing in the same lake, but in the middle of acres and acres of grass. Dude, that water is, well, cl our clear. It looks like sweet tea, but it's clear yeah. as a bell. Because, yeah. you know, the grass is doing its job. Yep. Now, the minute you get a strong wind kick up when there hadn't been one, yeah, you know, it dirties the water real quick because it blows it back off the grass. Yep. But it's immediately filtering it right back. I mean, you can you can fish in one day and watch that water there go from clear to mucky to about back to clear. Mm -hmm. You know, just on where you get around the grass beds, you know. Yep, that makes sense. And Bob, I know you've been typing. I've been talking. Let me catch up, Bob, here. The lake I live on is basically unfishable from July to ice up because of algae. And see, that's it, man. They, they're sending this 
and our water is not bad. You know, I'm talking about with all the poop in it. It's just rocket fuel water. Yep. It's ready to grow, whatever. We're letting it out. It goes down, and instead of going in Everglades, it's going over to the coast where all these rich people got their houses and those canals that no water moves in. And, you know, it gets in that warm water at the coast, and it just grows, man. I mean, it just grows. So we have an issue up at our lake, John, where there's farmland all around. So the fertilizer gets washed into our lake, and that just creates a spurt with the algae there. Yeah. And then spray on top of that, which makes all that stuff float and get nasty. So that's why cheese, because it looks like cheese on the water. It gets real thick. Right. And that's where I fish them frogs, but... Uh, a lot of that is from farming and from fertilizer runoff going into the lake, and it just creates that algae bloom because the fertilizer, what's yeah. it do? It creates growth. Well, it's same. water, too. Same That's thing. exactly what the Kachobi's doing. Did you see where Ron Spanish signed that bill to help the uh, cleanup of Lake Okeechobee? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Scott's really on that with that, man. He's really into that. Yeah. You see, it started in the 40s when they – took the water leaving Okeechobee because they wanted to build these fine houses below us. And instead of letting it run in the Everglades, they built canals and tried to turn it uh, east and west. You know, the water's coming down Florida. They tried to turn it to make all this dry. And, you know, Mother Nature wants to go, you know, south with that water. It wants to go downhill. Yeah. And that's, that's what it's going to have to do. They're going to have to let it go back. Uh -oh. Hey, right? That oh, be jealous, isn't it? Oh, I'm, oh, Bob, I'm so jealous. Hey, wait a minute. Let me take my glasses off so you can see that jealousy of my sun, sunburnt, cooned up eyes. <laughs> I don't miss it a bit. What? Not, not at all. But, all right, Ted, let's get to your, uh, let's yeah. talk about the the Ted one verse one challenge first. What you, we'll what we'll you got going on, Teddy? We're going to talk about that first. So, yeah, I, I got the idea from, I'll give credit where credit is due, from Scott Martin, because Scott Martin did the Scott Martin Challenge. What he, right. would, he would invite professional anglers onto his boat to fish with him and then have a contest. So what I figure is, why not do something like that, but just do it on a live stream? So what we're going to do is I'm just challenging people to fish with me. It's basically, it's a fun thing, but there's going to be some competitive and some crap talking. You know how that is. I think you're the first one that actually answered me, so you'll probably be the first one that I do it with. So that'll be fun to start it off uh, with that. But all year I'm going to do that. I'm, and when I'm fishing, I'm going to put it out there as like a, a post. Hey, who wants to, you know, do the off hook challenge with me this weekend? They they pick the time, and as long as I got the free day, I'll let them pick the time. We'll do like a two hour window. We'll fish. Uh, it's either going to be biggest bass. It'll be the most bass or most inches, you know, something like that we're going to do on the live. And you know how it is. with poundage and stuff like that, a lot of people don't have the scales. So we might be just total bass or we can go to total inches or we can go to total weight. And I think that'll be cool. And it doesn't cost anything to join. And if you beat me, you win something probably from my merch store or a prize that I have already. And then if I win, I just get bragging rights. So I think it'll be pretty fun. See Randy busted his chops right there. Sorry, Smith. Now, not too much here, Randy. Right, but, we'll, but we'll see this year. But John's going to go out. I think he's going to be the first one. So we'll start off the season with me and John going head to head, one on one with the great one. And, and uh, see, that helps you because we don't get signal at Donkey Land. So we either have to be at Jackson or Headwaters. Yeah, and I might have thought that one out too, John. You, and you know. might have. Yeah. You might have. <laughs> So but but back to talk about Scott Martin challenge. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, you talking about the Scott Martin challenge. You know, that's, that's what our dream is. You know, he fishes donkey land too. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see the SMC against SWC. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would yeah. be a great one right there. You know, I would probably fly down there to witness that. And you know, he, and it wouldn't be a pushover for Scotty. I mean, he would. Oh no, you know, I know. I know. Yeah, he, he better be, he'd bring Hillary. I like to see Scotty and Hillary. There's one right there. He's put a heavy weight right there with some water charters for sure. There's one, Ted. You're talking about a man that likes competition. Oh, yeah. He loves competition. That's somebody that will challenge you, Ted. That will be a good one, too. That's what I want. I want, it, I want it to be fun. I want it to be the competition. There's going to be smack talking, I'm sure. But that's what oh, I, I want. want. You know what I mean? I want that to 
I just think it would be cool to have one on one and people watching it. I think it'll be real fun. And it ain't going to be for four or five hours. It'll be for two hours. We'll set a time limit. We'll probably get on a little early to discuss what we're going to do and then go at it for two hours. And then if you win, you get to pick something from my merch store or a prize that I already have there and you'll know it. Or I get bragging rights. That's it. So I think I don't know. Come up, taking it from Scott Martin, you know, the catfishing community does these all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're based on are these, you know, one versus one tournaments. Fun Anybody that does it, watch, which I'm not a cat fisherman, but man, them guys put on some shows, some lives with fishing. I'll give them credit. Uh, and Jody, too, the guys and women. And uh, Stuart, this isn't, uh, we don't keep up with Bob. I mean, he didn't call, let me know what he's up to. Boob. Well, we'll go here. I know I have bigger bass than that boy from Pittsburgh could do a bass challenge with you. Oh, there you go. There's you another one. Yep, that's it, buddy. But Line you, them up. You got to think, though. I don't just fish PA. I fish New York and all that stuff. So we're going to have bass challenges. That's what I want, though. I want everybody to get in. It's going to be a big, fun thing. Big, fun event. It's going to go yeah, yeah. anytime yeah. I can fish. Yeah. And, you know, out there, you know, y'all talk about this competition, competition. You ought to be in my boat. Just think, yesterday I put a freaking seven six in the boat and was like, "That's too yeah. much pressure. That's too much pressure being on a boat with Lindy." Man, I, I danced around, you know, for an hour and a half, like, and, and you know, I, I don't want to tell too much, but you know, half bumpy, but going, well, at least I got big fish. At least I got big fish. You know, certain later on in the night, it was like, "No, you don't. No, you don't." Hey, yeah. Bernadette, hey, welcome in. I got a big, uh, I got a big uh, tournament June 9th up at uh, Prince Galitzin. I don't know if Slabby knows where that is, but Glendale Lake in PA, and it, that's not a real big bass lake. So you get a four or five ponder up there, you're in the money with that. And there's over 300 boats in that. Every year we get into that, so that'll be I'm six. Well, I got you beat. I'm six three, but my small at my lake. So. And would you say wherever it's at again, just one more time, just for me. Say we're the uh, Prince Galitzin. The other what? Prince Galitzin Lake. Is it like a prince, like Prince and Galitzin? Yes, Prince and Galitzin. G A L I Z Z E N. Galitzin. Oh, that's a big. I'm, I'm sure that's a big spoonbill. That's a big fish. Whoa. And uh, Mr. Slab said his biggest is a six-two. I remember when I caught my first six-two. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I got a six three smally two years ago, so that was my biggest of, on that lake. Welcome in, Arigo. Hi, Arigo. So let's now let's go about let's talk about real quick because I don't know how much time I got left, but let's talk about our one bait challenge that we're gonna do. All right. Okay. So, Lead the way there, Teddy. Yep. So the one bait challenge is uh it's gonna be a small water charter and I teamed up. We're gonna we we're talking about it. We still gotta hash out some details, but I did put a post out to get it in people's heads. We're gonna do a one bait challenge, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take information until we pick the bait. We're gonna get information. We'll make announcements. We'll do lives like this. We're gonna put the baits on the spin wheel. It's gonna be for bass only, so you gotta pick a bass bait which you'd want to use. We're gonna put it on a spin wheel. We're gonna do a live. We're gonna press the wheel. We're gonna see what bait it lands on. Whatever bait it lands on. We're going to use that bait to fish. And then anybody that wants to get in it is going to have to send me their address, their channel name, and their obviously their, their own name. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy those baits and send them to you. And then when you, when you get the baits in the mail, you're free to go out and make a video. There's going to be a time frame, like a deadline. So when you get your baits, you're going to say, hey, John, hey, Ted, I got my baits. I'm starting to make the video. And then we're going to put a deadline when the video has to be in and then after that we're going to have all of the videos we're going to make one live we're going to go th we're going to have like i'll make a video or john will make a video all the the bait the videos will be linked in the description you guys go over look at all the it's almost like my youtube starter kit video or giveaway you go down to all the videos you watch them and you vote on them with that uh you know whatever we put out and we'll take the votes from there and then we'll do another live with the winning with the winners. And if anybody's interested in donating any prizes, I got some of my partners and affiliates to donate some prizes for that. I'm donating some prizes. I believe John and Lindy are donating some prizes as well. So if anybody's interested in donating any prizes, please email John or get a hold of John or myself, John and Lindy, and let us know. 
And if anybody wants to donate any money, you can do PayPal, whatever you want to do. But I don't really give a crap about the money. But if you want to donate prizes, we will take them because I would like for everybody that gets in it to get some kind of decent prize, at least for participants. Yeah, and it could be, you know, a pack of five soft plastics or a hard bait. You know, we're going to, yep. everybody will have the same bait. We'll have the, we'll send the baits to each person. Yep. And I'm thinking maybe you have to make a short saying you have the bait and, you know, you're ready. That's how we'll know you're entered. Yep. It's and then you'll have like a two week period. And it's not all about catching the most fish. It's, you know, it's, and not about the editing and it's not about, I mean, it's about all of it together, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ain't the biggest fish. It ain't the most fish. It ain't the best editing. It's the combined total video of, and, and the best video made that we that everybody wants to vote on. And it's not just going to be one or two of us voting. It's going to be whoever wants to vote on it can vote on it. And then we'll take the most, uh, the most, you know, whoever won. And I'm hoping to get a couple of different places with prizes, depending on how many prizes we get donated and how we rank. So it'll be really fun. Take a poll, you know. Yeah. Yep. Look, Northeast Slab Hunter said he'll put in something. And uh I'll take another ACC rod. Uh yeah, Robert, but see it's gotta go on the wheel, and then if it gets picked, we have to get a freaking top prop for everybody in the contest. So that ain't gonna work. I have top props, so I'm not worried about that. <laughs> right, but I mean we'd have to make sure everybody has one and you can they don't even make them anymore. Except Robert and Bob has a hookup now. If he wants to send me a box of about 15 of them. Yeah, yeah but that'll be fun. And What's what up, Hogleg? Maybe Hogleg will get in the bass tournament in the one bait challenge. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't have to be a bass. I don't think. If you no. can take whatever kind of bait it is and go over to the coast or yeah. go in your and catch a cat, but whatever you do, it's all about your video. Yeah. It's and really, you don't even have to catch a fish to win. If you go out there and hook the bait in your butt and cause a big crazy sea, I mean, you could win that way. Yeah, it'll be fun that way if you do it. Any fish with the, if the bait we pick, any fish you catch is fine for the... Uh, yeah, we'll get it all hashed out. That's just ideas rolling along. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do it. We're gonna, it'll probably be a, a thing in June, you know, like maybe end of May, June thing that we're going to have out with the one bait. Uh, but I am going to start the 1v1 probably in May when I start fishing. I'll start posting things, and anybody that's interested, I'll probably go one to one on one on one with John or whatever to first, just kick it off, kick the season off, and then you guys just base it off of that, and then we go at it, and then uh, the one bait challenge will kick in, and then after that, I'm probably going to be doing my home bait, you know, the bait challenge where you got to make a bait from something at home, and that'll be my three big deals this year on my channel. So, I tell you what, Ted, let's start your one versus one challenge off with. The first one you got me or Lindy, and the second one you got the other one. Let's just okay. knock those two out right off the bat. That's fine. We'll do that. Yeah. Yep. We'll get you and Lindy are done, and we'll get it up. Start kick. Start. I would love to go against you guys first because you guys are the team to beat anyway. So. Yeah, and that way you know it kind of. And you know what? If I do just happen to win, that takes the pressure off me all right. the And uh, okay, let's talk about winning here. Let's <laughs> talk about the Shane Flint tournament. Yeah, that's another. Y'all realize that he has done that tournament for three years. It's gotten bigger every year. Lindy won first place the first year. Now this is on one big fish by length, and it's, you know, we were in the south, so that covers, you know, what all the way up to like Virginia, and across to Texas, yeah, doesn't it, Ted? Yeah, it goes all. Yeah, it goes all the way up and now. Like North Carolina, yeah. but anyway, she won first place the first year, second place the second year. Yeah. I mean, first place both the first two years. And then this year it got so big, there was 466 people in it. Lindy got second in it this year, and I got fifth. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I mean, which is crazy that, you know, Lindy has been in the top each year, but hell, me and her both are in the top five out of 466 people. And, and that's, that's people in Florida. That's not, you know, that's a lot of people in Florida are in that. Well, didn't the person that win was from Georgia this year, correct? Georgia. And caught some freakishly long fish because I won't give the length away of Lindia's, but it was only 24 inches, the big one she caught yesterday. Yeah. Which would not have helped her in the Shane Flint tournament. Yeah. So that tells you. you know, a fish of that quality. And his, I think, weighed less than Lindy's. It was just one of them freaky long ones. Yeah. This was 25 and a half inches. 
<laughs> yeah, we got to tell on Mr. Rob. He come down here. First day I went to pick Rob up, he was disappointed. Lindia wasn't in the truck. Yeah. He goes, where's the captain? I was like, dude, you're on a charter. It's all you. You know, I'm not, that I'm not even fishing. This is all you. Yeah. Oh, he pouted up a little bit. So I, I said, I'll tell you what, you fish today. I said, I got a surprise for you the next day. I said, and Lindia can come the third day. Nice. It was all about that. And you know, from the video, you know, first day was all about him. We had a slow day. Second day is when Retro came down and fished. So we all three, they fished pretty hard. I, I fished along. But then third day, he said he wanted Lindy to put it. I mean, she didn't want her hold back, and she didn't. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If, if you had to pick, I mean, I, I enjoy Lindy's company. I'd want her on the boat. But people that don't know, I would probably say, eh, I'd rather fish myself than have Lindy on it. <laughs> Who's going to wipe you out? I tell you that right now. Yeah, you know, Rob just kept on and on about, uh, Oh, I love competition. I like you. Go get it. I mean, just oh, there's Wolfie. What's up, Wolfie? Hey. Wolfie, what's up? But Ted, you know, me and Lindy, I have a ball of fishing. Yeah. But I, I must say, the We Go and the B Maz and the No Name, boy, them boys had a ball. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You watch their videos. Oh, I see it all. I I still I'm getting comments about your trip. I do what? On my videos, I'm getting comments about the trip that he went with you guys. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's commenting to, on my videos about your guys' trips. Yeah. I told you right there that he, he enjoyed it. <laughs> but he, I mean, asked, he asked me the other day, he goes, hey, are you moving to Florida? I said, <laughs> uh, "Not. Any, we're looking down there. And he's like, I have a condominium down here. They're going about 400000 I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to hold back on that one. Hey, how Greg? You and Melissa, I'm not so looking sorry. for a Hang on, Ted. Hang on, Ted. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry for your loss. I really am. I know exactly what you feel because I lost my Coco of 10 years. And she was just like my baby. I mean, I, yeah, feel how, I know what you feel. How glad and Melissa lost their little chihuahua a week or two ago. Just, oh. just, this this sucks. This yeah. sucks. It's a part of the family for sure, you know? Oh, oh yeah. Hell yeah. You're with your dog and your pet. Treat them better than you do the family, really. Yep, they're the only oh. one when you get home. All every single day, they're wagging their tail when you walk in that door. Yeah, when's the last time you laid on the bed and just kind of rubbed one of your kids or something? Or, you know, while you're going to sleep, just you, know, you don't do that. That's my what... Coco, she stays right here on my shoulder. I mean, just like a child, I'd walk around the house. She's just right here all the yeah. time. I missed work for three days when I lost my silver lab years ago, and I I couldn't go to work after I lost my dog. Man, I was I was tore up. Yeah. All right, thank you, Rob. Dude, I just I just have to try to keep up with Lindia. And see, that's what gets me. You know, I catch so much jokes in hell about Lindy always out fishing me. Nobody actually brings up the fact that, you know, I'm still catching way more fish than most people do. She's just catching way, way more fish than most people do. Yeah, a lot of people don't see that. They think, okay, there she beat John, but then John would beat probably 99% of the people too. So that just shows you right there how many uh fish she catches i i wouldn't want to, i mean I, I i i wouldn't put my money on myself if i was fishing against one of you guys for sure but, but if you wanted somebody to take you fishing would you uh, want the person that catches the most or the person that's always with the person that catches the most i think uh yeah you want to yeah. want to show them where to go <laughs> which i don't show her where to go by no means but just think I'm there every time fish get caught in that boat. Sometimes on a charter, Lindy's not there, so I at least got that. So. Hogleg said, "Thank you, Miss Lindy." And Hogleg, Bugman, you know he's been filling it in, but I know everybody's been telling you. But dang, I miss the boar's nest. Yeah. I get up in the mornings, and I mean, I'm just, I just. Hit. But do, do y'all? I'm not trying. I just do y'all, but let you know that we do miss you. Yeah, that's a shame. But yeah, it'll be fun. I'm glad. Oh, it will. It'll, it'll, it'll all be fun. Yeah. Get I'm glad that you guys want to do it first. And we'll do the, we'll do the best of the best first, I believe, and we'll see if I'll get all the pressure off me. If I get my butt whooped, then I can try to rebound the rest of the year. But see, it's the perfect one, Ted. Because if you lose, you can always say well, they're in Florida. Yeah. You know, for ninety nine percent of the people in the country, that they'll ever like. Oh, let me tell you what's funny with Floridians. We roll up to the boat ramp yesterday after fishing. There's some guys loading their boat in a mud boat. You can tell local dudes our age, you know. 
I won't tell numbers because I don't want to give the video away, but they're like, hey, how'd y'all do? I was like, oh, we did this and had this one, you know, as a big one, and this one is a big one. He looked over with a smirk and goes, oh, fishing with shiners. And I went, I just thought, went, no, all on artificial. And dude, that dude's face is like, oh, wow, that's a good day. You know, he was, you know, Floridia, that's the first thing. I'm shiners because then you, they go, okay, that's why. That's why, yeah. Yeah, that's I, our blowing it off. I never really did the old roll. I did fish once at Roland Martin's uh, marina down there, and we did fish for shiners with balloons. That's the first time I went. Oh, it's, it's nothing like fishing with artificials, but it's I mean, cool too. But you can catch some fish like that. I mean, that's that's just the norm down there. But if you can do with artificials, you're doing something. Yeah. yeah. When you have the time, yeah, you can do that. You know, but if you're on a short thing. vacation, you want to go catch a big fish, shiner's the way to go. Yeah. What's, sure. what's Billy Dean say? That local guy says sometimes it's easier to feed them than fool them. Yep. See, my thing though, too, John, what you're saying about, you know, me getting both of you, the, you know, one after the other. If I lose to the first one, which is very, very likely, highly likely, I got to say, I can't read. It's going to be tough to rebound with the next one. So it's either you or I'm going to, it's a tough one. First two are going to be the, be tough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it'll yeah. be. Just be thankful it's not in the next couple of weeks, dude, because I'm telling you right now, we are on. Our fish are like yeah, me too. On scale one to ten. Our fish are banging on about 8.6. They're yeah. not quite They're not quite ready to just be. I'm telling you, I think in the next week or so, maybe when Coach is here, there's going to be like a 50 fish day, 60 of big ones. I mean, they're. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and they've graduated every time, you know, they've gone like from two pounders to three pounders. Well, now catching four pounders. That's the thing, I'm going to be afraid to. To play you by weight, I'm gonna to have to do with something else. Numbers, but look at you. Watch our videos. Dude. The last four or five videos, we were catching six pounders. You know, we caught like five, a six, eight, six, seven. Every video had a big six pounder. Yeah. Now we're, you know, then we were in the seven pounders. You know, Lindy caught the seven, eight, or seven something a couple of days ago, and then you know, this, it's yeah, it's yeah. But you're catching your sixty fish. I don't think there's fifty or sixty bass in my lake. Hog leg, bug man burns himself out getting out of bed to go pee at 3 a.m. So <laughs> come on now. He'll need a nap before then. Oh, here we go. Hog leg, get my number off someone. Text me if you can in the next week or so. It's cold, buddy. It's cold, slabby still. My uh, Hoggy, I got Bug's number. If you do want it, you can text me. And I'm sure you know a lot of people, but Hog, if you want to text me, I can text you Bug's number. Slabby ass hog. Was up Before there. you leave, Ted, let me show something off here. Fine. I haven't even been up my lake slabby yet. It's going to be the beginning of May is when I first go up to the lake. And usually that's when the small moths start spawning. The first week of May. So I'm going to try to get on some footballs the first week of May. And then that's when I'll start my uh, 1v1 type deal. So it'll be fun, though, guys. Just sign up. Let me know. Email me. It's in the description on my community tab. Get a hold of me. Or if you can't get a hold of me or know John, you tell John and John will. Sign you up with me. That's all. You know, we'll get together and uh, we'll get it going and we'll talk about it. Uh, everybody here knows and hears me talk about, and Ted probably met him, about my neighbor, Gary Brown, James Brown. Yeah, Gary Brown, yep. All right. Remember, he wrecked his airboat down there three years ago. It's been in the shop, right? Robert, check this out. Let me see if I can get it where it's visible. I Hang saw on. that, yep. Hang on. You're he good. got his airboat back. I don't know if y'all can see. That's like 650 horsepower of nothing but go fast machine right oh, there. Man. And it does. Let me see if I can zoom in on that motor any better. How is Gary doing with his, uh, how's Gary doing with him? He got out of the hospital. How's he doing? Oh, he's doing good. Can you see how big that motor is? Can you see it? See that picture, John? Yeah. Yep. It's the biggest. It's like a NASCAR from a NASCAR shop. It's the biggest he can build the motor without going nitrous. Nice. But he has gone right now to a big weekend. Airboat love in up on Kissimmee River. Oh, he's been subdued. The guy's been so freaking excited. And I mean, he got it. Everything's been going against him. He got his airboat back. Trailer lights wouldn't work. Took it down here on Okeechobee to test ride it. Put it on the trailer. Went to pull up the ramp. Forgot to latch the strap. You know, when you reel it up, it slides off the trailer and stands up on its end in the ramp. On the, but, you know, he unloads it by sliding it off. It's made to do that. But... He still slid it and slid it and stood it up on him. He just For sure, went to back in his little carport 
a uh, day before yesterday, something in his road where his back's at. So he's looking in the mirror like, what the hell is that in my carport? Figured out it's a turtle. About that time he backs into one of the poles on the other side of it. I mean, just because it's brand new, everything's redone and everything. There ain't a scratch. And well, wasn't a scratch, dent, scuff. The next time I come down there, that would be fun to do, maybe. Yes. Hi, we're definitely going to have to put that in the mix there. But I can come down more than one day, too, because I'm right up the road, not too long. So it's right. coming down. I'll drive down and see you guys or the kids can come down. and. Welcome in, Skip Jack, Cindy. i seen Bob here, too, from anything. He was in here. Yeah, I think I highlighted him. What's up, Bob? Oh, it was Victoria's daddy used to build air, but I remember that hog leg, your cousin that we met used to build air, but yeah, this and a Gary Brown's is, you know, some of these here are work airboats. His is a go fast. There's Mr. Monty Sheets, used to live in the great town of Okeechobee. Hey, Monty Sheets. It is, Monty. It's a blast, man. Gary Brown, like I said, he's 74, 5, somewhere. He's cool. I like him. Oh, he's that, yeah. that crappy when he was sitting there eating. I mean, he was a good dude. Oh, Gary Brown's a good guy. Like I said, his, his full name is James Gary Brown, so not everybody says they live across the road from James Brown. <laughs> And I mean, hey, dude, that dude can play guitar, piano, I mean, anything. Sing. Sing. He's played with Jimmy Buffett, like the Almond Brother. Oh, speaking of which, rest in peace, Nikki Betts. Yep, Nikki Betts. Nikki Betts, I mean. Yep. Oh, uh, Hogleg's been ran over by an airboat. <laughs> Hogleg, there's guys down here chasing pigs down in their airboats, and they'll go sliding in them. And I've seen them run over them, and then a video where they couldn't find the pig they were chasing. They're off the airboat looking, can't find it, can't find it. Crank the airboat up and move it, and the pig's in the mud under the airboat. Yep. Well, listen, I'm going to jump out of here, John. i got to go. I'm off my break. i got to go figure some stuff for the weekend. Thank you guys for letting me promote that. Thank you for helping me promote it. Thank you for being a part of that. It's going to be fun. Anybody who wants to fish, get a hold of me, 1v1, see if you got what it takes. And we're going to see how John and Lindy do against Off Talk Outdoors. So I'll see you guys. You guys have a great weekend. And we will see you. Don't work too hard, Teddy. Man, that guy's like, as y'all know, we know Roland Martin. And he has a, you know, there's a video Roland Martin and an in-person Roland Martin. When you break a camera out, he goes into, you know, TV Roland Martin. That's Teddy. Teddy has got YouTube Teddy and normal Teddy. See, I was in a swimming area at Rock's Fishing Camp when I was young, and all of a sudden, an airboat came out of the weeds. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I know that's not funny, Hog Leg, but for some reason, I can pick you up. And you're not the world's fastest talking gentleman. I can just picture you going, Oh, damn. I believe that airboat's going to plop. Run me over. I don't think so, Robert. I haven't heard anything. Any news from the producer? Yeah, back and forth. He. They're just really busy too. They yeah, I mean, he is real busy, don't you? If you, I got, I'm, I'm on his YouTube channel. He's got stuff going on, but you know, he didn't have to. He schedule cancel, schedule cancel. Then he called me wanting to go like the next day, and I kind of had to do whatever guys got to do. I had to say, oh, I'm busy. Me and Lindy already had a day planned fishing. So I mean, if he's just gonna drop me on days, I wasn't gonna change something. But we'll get it together. Good to see you in the chat. There he goes, any fan talking to Hog Leggy. He misses his morning gig. Are you miss gig in the morning or his morning? I know what you mean, Ben. <laughs> but I miss gig in the mornings too. I don't see him anymore. Yeah. Yeah, we probably won't make it till 10 o'clock tonight. We just wanted to come back up here and hang out a bit. Yeah, Shane too. I guess he's been really busy. Uh, Mr. Hogleg, would you want to come up? I don't know if you're dressed for live. You probably laid back with your belly hanging out. But Watching it on the big screen. Or Mr. Bob. Bob. That's who needs to come up one night. We need to get Bob to come up one night. I kind of thought the We Go guys might show up tonight. They said they were going to. If anybody doesn't have their channels, go back and watch our video and go pick them up. We Go, B Maz, and No Name Bassett. No name Bassett. And definitely check out the video in the morning we got coming out at 9 o'clock. It's a good one. And I would appreciate everybody in here. That would help me if everybody in here with a YouTube channel would go over to that premiere I have posted and share that bad boy out. That would be like right on time. I would really appreciate that. And it's a fun one. It is. It really is. 
Oh, I'm not going to ask you, Wolfie, because I'm scared you'll come up and sing. And Wolf, then, did you watch my video from about two weeks ago where I sing along with Waylon? I was quite impressed. Where is Gig at? I guess he's working there, Buck. Yeah, I bet with that warm, warm air. Oh, Melissa could put that part together in no time. And hell, you've been doing the damn rough and ready look lately, the wash and go. He has. He took the part out of his hair. At last, I think that's what happened right before he closed down the boar's nest. He let his hair down. He clap a hat on. Oh, okay. I was like, what? <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Put a hat on. <laughs> I ain't seen him either, Bug. Bad hair day. Put a hat on. Mar. Mar. Yeah, I put a hat on on a bad hair day. The problem is my bad hair just comes out the top of it. <laughs> But yeah, the video tomorrow is quite fun. And you need to see how much your donkey land got burned up. Thank you, Diana. She's I just working hard. Time. Much appreciated. Very much appreciated. Even though most people have everybody. But when I've seen it and heard dogs howling. Oh, wow. oh my goodness there, man. <laughs> oh, I'm looking over at Stan Day and J.G. Hill. They going at it. Wish I knew how to join live together. We join their live with our live. Is it? Oh, Vogler, you ain't had a bad hair day in what, 15 years? <laughs> so do you wake up and have bad forehead days or scalp days? Live she goes on live at nine o'clock. Oh, okay. Which got three more minutes. Yep. Stan's gonna be quitting and, and pontoon Joe Die is gonna be taking off. Uh, who's we got here, Robert? Your videos are so fun to watch, and anytime I can see a dude that's over 20 doing a cartwheel, I'm on it. <laughs> but did you notice that the we go did a cartwheel trying to keep up? That's His wasn't rap. no better than mine. <laughs> In my defense of my damn cartwheel, we were up against the door and where that camera was. I had about three foot wide. I just knew I was going to take everything out yeah. and had like one shot. I said, okay, I'm going to do this in one take yeah. on concrete. We but we nailed it. That was a fun video. And I ain't got a bit of rhythm, so. And Robert, there's another good one. You got to go back a year or more, probably, that we do. It's the one with Parabellum Fishing. That's a pretty good one. With it. You just have to. I need to talk with you, Hogleg. <laughs> we might have to have the birds and bees conversation. I'm not sure you've ever. Get I'm not sick, Mommy. I'm not sure you've ever had the birds. Uh, the high drill on Okeechobee is not doing great. Now that the water is getting lower, it's coming back. But now at Donkey Land, it's motor choking. That's why we stay up there. Donkey Land looks like the Okeechobee that you probably fished with all the grass, the high drill. Uh, and it's really nice. Well, thank you, Slab Hunter. It's funny. You can tell when I start learning new tricks because a couple of videos will have kind of like the the same trick in them. Then I'll find something else new. But today, I'll tell you one on today's video. I made that video, posted it for tomorrow, and YouTube said, oh, no, you're not. Two of the songs in it were, weren't just copyrighted. They were blocked in global blocks. So I had to go back and change two of the songs. And it is so crazy, the two songs out of all of them that got blocked. I can't tell too much, but one of them, I bet I didn't use 10 seconds of it. Maybe, maybe a little more. But 10 seconds of this little song, and it was globally blocked. So I changed it up a little bit. But see, now it's like a stepchild. I don't know if anybody feels that way when they edit. When I make a video, that's my baby. And just because I had to change a song in it, all of a sudden, it's like a stepkid. It's it's really nice and I love it, but it ain't quite like my other one. Oh yeah, the cartwheel. How you like that? Wait a minute, how did you get Promise on the video in that one? I know Promise. Do you not know that? Me and Wes are buddies. We went fishing before. Okay, Rob, let me back up. Uh no, Stu Diddy. Hogleg wants to talk. Monty asked about Hydrilla. Uh, me and Ted's doing a one verse one, and we're going to kick his ass in that, and we're going to do a one bait challenge. And Jerry 
Brown got his airboat. Gary Brown got his airboat. And Donkey Land's catching big fish. And hell, you're back. Here we go. We're, you're good. But yeah, I, I called Wes. Wes, hey, man, can I use this? He's like, sure, man. Go right ahead. I don't care. Uh, we have it, Monty. Uh, we do, but we have it lately. Like I said, we've. I'm not one that when I get on some big fish, I really don't like to venture too far. Lindy wants to go here and there, and I'm like, I don't want to leave till we're not catching fish. I like adventures. But, Aaron, but this weekend, like he said, the airboat thing's going on up there, so there's going to be loud yeah, noise. Yeah, Gary Brown's up at Camp Mac at Kissimmee right now at the big annual airboat love-in, and it's pretty cool. They have a building way back in there that everything at that building has got to be brought in with airboats, and it's going to be live music all weekend food, all this, but everything has to get trucked in by airboat. Not in the shorts he wears in front of there. Hang on, we'll go back to that. Plan on being more prepared for job, and so we need to, a boat versus boat partner, the pride of what's got. There you go. And Robert, it'll be, you know, before daylights and late in the evenings, you know, we'll work around the heat. If it gets too hot in the middle of the day, you know, we'll fish in the morning. I'll drop you off. I mean, we'll take power, go home, take power naps a couple hours, because, you know, it it's daylight till nine o'clock, so. Find a local restaurant somewhere and go sit up. I will do that some, yeah. Cool oh, Donkey Land, we'll go out to the cafe. Most interesting man vibes. I know Wes, no biggie, ha ha. Looks like spec fish was, yeah, they did pretty good that way. Okeechobee's was funky, man. Yeah. That's everybody kind of just, it started yeah. and then just kind of burnt. And the it's only crazy. Thing that did good was the mahogany group down at uh, Monkey yeah. <laughs> And it's wild how many, uh, snowbirds sold pontoons and all this year you could tell yeah. a big chunk said i'm out which you know age has a lot to do with it and all that and then it was a bad fishing year and like joe sucks huh like <laughs> burn that my cartwheel damn near become a split so do i look like cheerleader material I got spirit fingers, but they only do they only do one spirit all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Got to see rocket launches the last couple of days. And for, I know a lot of y'all probably know, I don't know if y'all been ever been around on a rocket launch. But it's crazy. We're what? How far are we, Rob? Hundred miles from where they're launching them, maybe there at Donkey Land. Maybe eighty. At Titusville for Somewhere around there. But anyway. It'll go up, and about the time we can't see it anymore is when the launch and the concussion gets our way. I mean, it'll make the birds on our lake holler and gators moan, and it is such a weird feeling to feel that, like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, like I said, we're 100 miles, maybe a little less away. We've actually not looked up and seen the rocket launch and feel that and go, oh, we missed the rocket launch, and look around and see it. I will probably try to get the grandkids on some big bluegill. That'll be fun. But yes, Rob, while you're off this week, uh, hit us up. There ain't no need to tote your boat that far. I mean, just hit us up and we'll meet at Donkey Land. I mean, only thing is, you, we won't take you to the boat ramp at 10 o'clock. We'll let you off on a dike and let you walk with all the cows. That's what's funny is all these cows in these pastures. The state owns that dirt road and they got gates up. Somebody has about 15 cows that got loose two months ago and they're just living along the road, that dike road. They're, one day they're way down there, one they're way up here. Okay. It depends, Bug. If you're edible, you're talking about a quarter pounder with cheese. It may not make a difference. But if you're talking about like a, hundred, a couple hundred milligram or one, Tucker verse, we were just talking about you. Hey, Tucker. <laughs> Funny story, Tucker. Where we're from in North Carolina, we used to fish a lake called Tuckertown. Well, Lindy got talking about the gas station in Tuckertown. We were driving home from Donkey Land. I'm like, what? She goes, the one there in Tuckertown. Like in North Carolina, she goes, no, the cheap gas station close to Tucker versus house. I was like, oh. So from now on, as we're leaving town, and you know, Tucker, 
Get up by your house, that first gas station on the left, that's the cheap gas. From now on, that's Tuckertown gas station. And then when you go on up and hit the high dollar one, that one's uh, Fort Drum. So on the way to Donkey Land, we leave Okeechobee, go through Tuckertown, Fort Drum, Yeehaw Junction, into Kenansville. So just know from now on, every time we go through there, we're saying Tuckertown. Oh, yeah. Lot of, lot of lot of farmland. There's more cattle per capita than there are people. Yeah, and like this country, and our our county has like more cattle than people. Like you said, a quota than the country. Who said that? About cows. Money. Money. Look, damn, everybody moves. I can chase him down. <laughs> oh, I know, Money. God, we come home from Donkey Land. We pass those three dairies in a row, and as it gets hotter and hotter. Oh, funny story with that. I'm bringing Bob from Wisconsin home from Kenansville from Donkey Land. We get in front of the dairies. I look over at Bob. I was like, watch out. It stinks right here. Mr. Bob rolls his head back, takes a deep breath, and goes, smells like Wisconsin. I, was like, I laughed. That was quite funny. That's it, Matt Tucker. You are the mayor of Tuckertown. Yep, mayor of Tuckertown. That's it. I'm going to ask him what he says. Oh, I'm getting up here. Truth money is what I like he's right on. Yeah, right yeah, down. Where is he at? This? Yeah. Yeah, I read one. But Jeb Hogg, there's big bluegills everywhere. I bet Donkey Man has some monster bluegill. What the bass don't eat. Yeah, we're really hoping Hogleg and Melissa make it down sometime. I'd really like to take them fishing. That's funny, Tucker. You are the mayor of Tuckertown. We say hi to you all the time. Every time we go by, one of us will just go, hey, Tucker. Which, for people that don't know, Tucker lives near us, and we have yet to meet Tucker on the road in town, and we live in a little small town. Did you go get some barbecue today? I started to. Well, who had the barbecue today? The, uh, torch run for the sheriff's office. Well, Tucker, you know they never done, but I'd say the spawn, yeah, is done. But there's always crappy. They're not. They don't disappear. But yeah, Tucker, did you go get some barbecue from where'd you say? It was in the parking lot at Publix. Oh. Like I said, something about spirit fingers. <laughs> hey, baby girl. Uh, all right, Monty. Appreciate you dropping in. Like I said, we're going to wind her down here in a little bit. We're not going to do the full two hours a Thanks day. For coming in, oh, Pearl, quit looking at my knees. Good morning, Amanda. Welcome. It's good evening for Amanda, isn't it? Good morning for Amanda. I mean, I've seen the crappy ore specs, you call them on Kissimmee. That's right. That's Amanda. She's our resident kangaroo tamer. Amanda got in trouble one time for smuggling stuff in kangaroo uh, pouches. <laughs> Wrestling team had a barbecue at the old movie theater today also. Well, that's right. It's morning, not evening. I, I knew that. It's hell. It's evening here. It's opposite. You just woke up. Well, wake and bake, Amanda. Tomorrow. I don't know. Is it already 420 at your house? Get you some Is it 420 yet? Is it? Well, since it's already 420 at your house, Amanda, look and see how good my premiere did. I got a premiere in the morning early. Look at it for me and tell me how many people showed up. Give my secrets away for smuggling. Oh, that's Mr. Lance. And Lance, have you noticed lately I call you Lance a lot? It just makes me laugh every time I do it. I don't say sir or nothing. He'll just say hey to me and I give him the Lance with an A and a lot and a thumbs up. It just makes me laugh. I don't know if he's, he probably hadn't noticed. They're like, what the hell is this fool doing? But they, a lot of people call him. They call him, say his last name, Lydia. Let's see if I let me get my Here, let me bring it up. Let me bring it up. See if you can guess what nickname they call him in the catfishing world. Makugay. I think it's like Makugay. Makugay. But they call him Lance Makuga. 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 Oh, he noticed that I call him Lance a lot. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the first time you've heard that either. Where'd you get it, Bridget? It's either that or I don't even know if y'all have them, but I grew up with Lance Crackers. 
So you'd be the last cracker. <laughs> yeah, Rob, think about that. Come and fishing with us. Just jump in the back of the boat. And we won't go early. I mean, see, you'd be better to come in the evening, but that puts you driving home late. But that's what we told the BMAS guys. They could either leave at four in the morning to drive down here. We could fish early or they could come later and just drive home like at 11 o'clock at night or get home at 11. So whatever you want to do, Rob, evenings would be better. Meet down here at like around two o'clock and fish till dark. My cool gay is the way it's pronounced. Oh, man, what do we got here? Easy, John. Easy about what? Pearl. Pearl's just tripping out. So, any fan, are you going to go live tonight talking about how you're going to go live or... Anything will go live at the drop of a hat. Now it seems like he's always ending it. I always miss it. I'll get a notice and get there and say, oh, I had to leave early. We go goes live. We go. He's got, it. he's got it going on. Other people will make shorts. So we go and do that little green screen where he's rating them and he's getting everybody's views. I love the fact that one of the best restaurants in Okeechobee is called the Speckled Perch and it doesn't offer a single menu. I don't see it. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> But a speckled perch is fresh water, so it shouldn't have seafood. And we are the speckled perch capital of the world. We, like I said, every year they, uh, we have a speck queen, a crappy queen. So. Crappy festival. And if you'll notice, the bar hooked to the speckled perch is called the brim room, like with a cowboy hat thinking the brim, but they spell it like the fish brim. So it's very confusing. But you must admit, Bob, that's a damn good steak you had there, wasn't it? I and, I it. and I told Bob when it goes, it's one of those restaurants where you sit down, they come take your order, they disappear in the back, and you literally can hear the bandsaw run and cutting your steaks up. <laughs> oh, that's right. You got the oh, okay. oh, Austin, old fish and fever has got that big ass tree limb rod. That's kind of cool. Are you talking Bob from Wisconsin or Bob the one nutted bicycle rider? It's after nine, too. I can say one nutted. I think he must be talking about Boab because Bob's all the way over. You're going to whip out gold member tomorrow. It was a smelting accident. Any fan half sack. That's him, half sack. Boom. What's up, Bill? Welcome in, buddy. I think I saw you comment on a video lately or something, didn't I? Bob, has Bob been busy? Rob telling you he's busy, Amanda. He's not busy. So what's up, Bill? I've seen you. I know the name. It seems like where are you from, man? It's very good in that band sauce. Story is not an exaggeration. Okay, yes. This John not I try not to exaggerate too much, really. I don't. I mean, my stories sound pretty far fetched, but yeah. <laughs> my stories are pretty damn far fetched. <laughs> Y'all know me when I go at something, it's you know wide open, full in, good or bad. Yeah, he's pretty much a WFO wherever he goes. And Bugley, I love his video he did it. And see, you stole it from me, Chris. Now I can't do Saturday Night Fever for at least six months on a video. And since I watched you, I've, oh, I, I want to do that same walking scene, but going down the dirt road. You know, all dusty, like wait till a truck goes by and just be walking down the dirt road with my dirty flip-flops. Watching a few from South Mississippi. See, we're one of the few people, Bill, that say, oh, you're watching way up north, from way up north. That's funny in the catfishing world. Some of them went down to Louisiana to be go with or hang out with. 
Creole, I think, one of them. And all of them are like, oh, you're down there, you're down there, you're down there. And I finally had to write in the chat, like, are you people are wrong? Louisiana is up there. Oh, congratulations, Bob, from Wisconsin. You got it, PV. There you go. Okay. They have met here. Bob, this is the hog leg. Remember the story about the guy that likes to say, oh, if you get a PB with a guide. So here we got the hog leg. And where's Mr. Bob's last comment up here? And Mr. Bob. And Bob, like on the video, said, he don't care what you say, hog leg. <laughs> That's right, Tucker. Best steak in town. Yeah. Freaking. Okay. And this is totally our opinion. We hadn't went in years. We went to the Brahma Bull one time, and I am not exaggerating, Tucker. Lindy bent her fork trying to cut her steak. It's only Lindy's ownership. And we complained, and they wanted to make another steak, and it was so bad. The second one that we literally got a new steak, and we just got up and left. Yeah. Left the food later. Just left it there. Didn't even ask for money. Just yeah. <laughs> you grabbed our kit and bounced. So, what do you fish for there, Bill? You bass fishermen, bluegill fishermen, cat fishermen, or are you just fishermen? Oh, and they 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 kind of count slab, but you gotta always say, "Oh, it's my PB with a guide." He just likes to get that started and get me stirred up. Score one for Hogway. Buckle Blue, y'all been banging big, going to K in the morning. How's the morning by? Well, welcome, dude. Glad you jumped in. I will. I really can't tell you, man. We've been on them in the afternoon and we hadn't been getting there to like one, two o'clock. And from there till dark is just, like I said, we got one in the morning coming out from yesterday that, like I said, I caught that seven, six early and thought I had big fish and Lindy had come back right before dark and beat me. I don't want to say what she beat me with, but she beat me. And when we got to the ramp and there's been people there, they're leaving early. So I don't know if that means the bike's not been on. Yeah. Or is it they come up, they're tired and they're leaving. I don't know how people are, but when I pass you on that dirt road, like at 12, 30, 1 o'clock when I'm driving in, I usually go, cool, fish weren't on fire. Because I don't know about you, and I don't know what to call you, Boca, but uh, if fish are on fire at D-Land, I am not leaving by 1.30. I will be there till they quit or I fall over. But we're going to be there, matter of fact, we're coming tomorrow afternoon. So we're going to be there around... Between 12 and 1, 1 is somewhere we, we get up and take care of my mama and, you know, get all our stuff. But, but we'll be there a little after lunch. Yeah. What's the premiere tomorrow? Uh, Slam, I don't have a damn clue about live scope. Boca will back you up where we fish at Donkey Land. I don't even turn a damn depth finder on. I don't look at nothing. If I want to check the depth, I dip my rod in the water. Usually I can just look and see the bottom. And uh, Boca, when's the last time you've been there, man? Water's dropping quick. It's getting right. To, if you're familiar with the boat ramp, we always watch the broken reflector at the end of the boat ramp. If you go there much, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, it's, out. it's out of the water. I'm going to go see Fozzie and Stain tomorrow. Well, Stain's kind of cool. I don't know. Fozzie Bear's kind of waka, waka, waka. Mm -hmm. I can't see him opening for Stain, but... You don't need their binder stand like 10 foot max. I wouldn't use it either. What's up, Mr. Lonesome Not I? Welcome, welcome. Hey, Lonesome Not I. But yeah, Boca, if you're still in here, man, and if you're going in the morning, hey, going to K in the morning, maybe we'll see you. And you can pick us out. I don't know if you know our green tracker with the big white power poles. Them power poles and the white trolling motor kind of give us away. Yeah, dude. My biggest thing with my phone is it changes on to in. And I don't know about y'all, but when I talk about out on the lake and I run up on you, there's a big difference and I run up on you and I run up in you. You know, your buddies are like, what? Like, damn phone is supposed to be on. A month ago, which we've been smashing them back and forth, like I said. But you know that lake, man. You can go one day and somebody just flipped the damn switch. Oh, yeah. What about... About a week ago, yeah. it wasn't that cold. That little front didn't change much, but it was like, bam. Yeah, 26 to like 20. yeah just bam. Yeah. Which people laugh when me and her bitch about a bad day and we caught like 17. But 
You know what I mean? Sometimes 17 come good, and sometimes 17 is a damn grind. Yeah, but, yeah we do need rain, Tucker. Yes. Mayor Tucker. But, Boca, uh, they've been hitting, you know, I'm a topwater twitcher, and we have to look for them. We hadn't found, we can get one or two in a spot, then it's like drip, 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 you know, work, 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 get a couple more. So we're, we're just, I swear, we're like a week from just absolutely that place just coming on fire. Welcome, Crystal. Good to see you. Hey, Crystal. But the big girls is hungry. It's pretty funny. They're thin from spawning, but now they're all getting pot bellies from damn eating. So they're like skinny pregnant girls. You know what I mean? They're they're thin, but they got that little boop. Thank that you, baby Amanda. Gut. But I tell you what, Pontoon Dodie, she's, she's queen in my book. That big, that, that girl, I mean, she catches them big fish. I mean, and does it and holds them. I mean, and holds them. I mean, she yeah, uh, I got a charter starting. I don't know if you how long you've watched this, Boca, but my buddy coach that comes in like four or five times a year, he'll be here 10 days, something, the 28th. 29th. 29th, be here for three days. And, man, all he wants is a trophy catch, and he's had like three, seven, eight. So I want to get him on this. Uh-oh. Bo, I got my package for Bridge Ranch using your code, and they even included a pack of Reforce Seconds. Great company. Oh, yeah. And that's cool, Robert. He, uh, I was talking to Steve one day. We were texting, and he goes, "By the way, we just got an order using your code." And he couldn't—he didn't know where it was from, but I, it might have been yours. But yeah, man, Steve and them are great people, yeah. and he takes great care of us. Yes, he does. The video premiering tomorrow. Lindia catches a nice one on a prototype bruiser bait. Which I don't see how I why they will not catch big fish. Oh, that's it's inevitable. Yeah. Boca, what color is your boat, man? We'll give it. We'll keep a peeper out for you. I won't come track you down or not, but I'll know where to throw my hand up. Maybe you make a video. If you want to be in the video, holler at us. I'm glad you're good hunting. I'm doing okay. Sorry. I'm about to say, who's good at hunting? I know we go well. We ain't made it ten o'clock yet. We're getting there. But the front lake's real dirty, Boca. You know, like it always is. But there's fish out there. I mean, you know, there's fish there. You can catch them in that dirty, but but it's tricky getting in. I don't know where you go in at. Yeah, the it's the the main canal's blocked past the fence post. The ones on the right. Going towards the airboat there. And then the first cut through is kind of blocked. You could probably get through. I would push through the first cut, but we kind of. You know, we tread a little less water. We cut across over by the fence post and just ease across. But them days are being limited. We're bumping, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're bumping a tag going across there. But going in that first drop, though, I mean, usually you have to go around that little island and go. In it's there. it's getting shallow. I mean, it's, it's getting it's shallow, shallow time. Yeah. Be careful, be careful. Oh, okay, man. Well, if, well, if you see you out there, give us a holla holla. How long does it take for Jacksonville to USWC? Might be down there sometime this year. Pretty yeah. Heavy. yeah. Uh, what are we from? Rob, how far are we from Jacksonville? Three and a half hours? Oh, six hours. Is it that far? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you. That's, a South That's right. That's South Georgia. That's right. <laughs> it usually takes us about six and a half hours to get from there to here. Yeah, let's go. Jacksonville. It's 221 miles. Three hours and 34 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Three hours, 34 minutes. I thought it was six. Rob said five. This says three, 34. Way I drive, probably three. So, depends on how bad you want to fish. Uh, I don't know. It's a, I don't know the name of that little lake, Boca, but it's 10 horsepower and only 10 horsepower and less. And we asked the game warden himself, you know, if we take the prop off, raise the motor up. He said, no. If you got anything bigger than 10 horsepower, he don't want to catch you in that lake. You don't get a ticket. And I don't know if you were here earlier. We pulled up to the ramp the other day, and a couple people from Alaska were fishing on the ramp. <clears throat> and this gentleman showed me the big old bass he had in his five-gallon bucket. And I explained to him it was catch and release only. And if that game warden comes down that dirt road and catches that bass in that bucket, it's your ticket. Luckily, he put it in a shiner bucket so the fish live. It was about a damn six-pounder. 
She was catching the hell out of them right at the boat ramp. Three, I mean, it looked like three, four pounders. She caught two or three right there. A little Asian lady from Alaska. We met a fella from Bessemer City, North Carolina. Yeah, he made the video. I don't know if everybody saw it when I said the gentleman from North Carolina. From Bessemer. He was right there in the cut through, so we had to kind of ease up by him. So we got a little video of him. But he had spread of probably the. Uh, what is, what is it, the lobster? Oh, that dude had, yeah. He, he had front row Oh, man, that dude had two screens on his steering wheel, bigger than my big 50-something inch TV and a bigger than the front. And mm -hmm. Probably seven pounds after he took it out of the shotter bucket. <laughs> yeah. It probably was. That's what I was thinking. He put it head down. <laughs> chomp, chomp. That's what me and Lindy had talked about. You know, if we caught the big uh, crappy on Okeechobee, you know, for the local bait shop contest, it's got to be alive when they weigh it. So we're out there, and Lindy's like, what are we going to do with it to keep it alive? I was like, we're going to throw it in the minute tank over there. I said, like, what's the worst going to happen? It's going to gain weight. Get in there. Yeah. Amanda, how's your bib hat? Unfolded. Forward-facing sunglasses. That's what, there you go, man. That's what I use all day, forward-facing sunglasses. Wait, wait a minute. I can prove it. And of course, the favorite win for us at Donkey Land is that out of the east. So whenever we're catching fish, we're blowing it. You know, we we drift with the wind. That's just the way we fish, and we're always facing the sun. Yeah. Oh, Lance got some family in Jacksonville. Well, Lance, you know when you come visit, where to drop down to? Yeah. When we first relocate, it'll be to Jacksonville area, and she will have to keep working in May. At May, only look at there you go. The way you do it, keep working it down this way. Oh, well, cool. It's almost back to being a hat, she said. <laughs> you better ruin that hat getting it that damn too. <laughs> oh, preach, preach to the choir, Boca. Even the shiner fishermen, guys in there will tell you, when the wind gets blow, quits blowing, it's, it's over. And that's what I tell people. If you watch our videos, when my hair is like blown out everywhere, we're catching fish. When my hair looks halfway like today, oh, we wouldn't be catching no fish today. And them freaking chizzy winks, whatever you call them, them grass gnats. Oh, they were vicious the other day. And Lindy will run them off of her and they just come over to me. And it ain't cool. And I'm a smoker, and Lindy hates to be around my smoke because them damn chizzy winks are out. And, and she's all up on me. I'm like, what's wrong with you? She goes, blow smoke over here. <laughs> but, Jeff, they biting. I'd say to heck with that tournament, man. When fish are biting, you got to strike with an iron's hot, Mr. Boca. I know fishing tournaments is fun, but, oh, them big girls getting ready. Okay, any fan, I don't want to be the one to tell you, but I don't think you have any. <laughs> Back to what Bogley talked about. You have like bad forehead days. Yours more like a five head, though. My buddy used to say that about our daughter, that her forehead was so big it was a five head. What was that? He said her forehead so big she doesn't have nightmares. She has drive-in movies. Oh, and they're working on the road. They're getting ready to have have it paved a little farther. They're past, uh, they're about down to what, Escape Ranch, somewhere down? Yeah, yeah, they're, oh, they're past Six Mile. He's been there a couple weeks ago. No, they're right at Six Mile Road. That's where it dropped off the dirt. Right. He was there a couple weeks ago, so it was already that far. Now they're oh. working almost down to, yeah. what, the Freedom, whatever the ranch thing is down there. Oh, got a five head. Y'all boys going to have to have bangs. Y'all can do the Jimmy Houston comb over. That's why I grew a ponytail, just in case. That way I could do the flip over, you know. Probably will fish Lake Apopka in the morning, then concert. Where was that when we went to that wedding? We crossed that lake that Bob Rob fishes. Where did we go to that wedding at? Um, towards Plant City. And somewhere we saw something for a lake. I was like, I recognize that name. I know, but it was, yeah. I swear we saw a lake. It, maybe it wasn't that trip. It's somewhere we saw one around. Yeah. She'd send you some of my homemade bug spray. <laughs> crystal, Crystal, Crystal. 
You're keeping away North Carolina bugs. Our bugs will rape and assault those bugs and send them back north. <laughs> and I don't say, oh, yeah. Okay, we know. We knew what get what bugs were in North Carolina. They'll, they'll put a straw in your bug spray. They will, they'll get addicted to your bug spray and be like them cocaine out here. <laughs> oh, Rob, it's paved to the damn loop road. But you can already feel that pavement. I swear I can feel that cheap black top already starting a damn washboard. They your herbal remedies and all that stuff. That's way cool. And you're a pirate outfit. That's way cool. I believe in herbal remedies. <laughs> She's very talented. She's very talented. Crystal, we, everybody doesn't know, we know Crystal from our North Carolina days. She's one of the only people, probably one of the few people on YouTube, knew my daddy. Yeah. Who and I and miss. Mama, and, and my mom, crazy yeah. mama. But, but knew my pops. Actually, my pops was Crystal's boss. Well, folks, I think we're going to wind it up. It's 930. We just hanging out BS and we're going to try to get back on. We're going to stay with Fridays for now. I'll give a heads up if we decide to move days. We're not really sure. We're not sure what day. Y'all have any suggestions? Like, what's a good day for y'all? You know? Yeah, just don't post it now because I ain't going to pay it no attention. Throw it in the hat. Just because, you know, now with charters and stuff, Fridays are just getting so packed up. Yeah, and getting ready to be summertime. People are busy on Friday evenings. And I loved him too, Crystal. All right, Boca, catch him up tomorrow, man. If you're in your tournament, good luck. If uh, you. you're at Donkey Land, just give us, you know, give us a wave wave. Yeah, you too, Chris. All right, Boca, go get after the, what do you say, Shad tomorrow? Shad. That's right, you got them Shad tournament things. I forgot yeah, about that. Shad. Yeah. All right, Boab. Later, brother. Bye, babe. Thank you, Diana, if you're still in here, and Slab Hunter, and everybody, Amanda. See you, girl. Amanda. Good to see you. Bye, Robert. Bye, Rob. Rob, Bob, Robert. Everybody. Premiere in the morning. Please, everybody, go share it out. Share it out. Share it out. All right. Really enjoy it. It's a fun one. See y'all in the morning. Later, folks. <laughs>